All right, well, we have Shane and Velda with us to share this morning, and it's so encouraging as a pastor of a church to have Christian missionaries that serve for over half the year outside this country, and we're just blessed to have you with us when you're here, and we understand the time is short with us, and we'll miss you again. But we're just encouraged to have this couple with us this morning to share, so let's pray over this couple. Lord God and Father, we lift this couple up to you. We have servants that have such a heart for you and such a desire to spread the message of your son all across the world. We pray for them. We ask for courage and strength for this couple as a couple, as individuals, and as servants of you. We pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Shane says I have to go first, so. Ladies first. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about what we did while we were, when we went. Um, we started off the year in uh, at Veritas. <laughs> Thank you. We started off with Veritas, where we had the fantastic organization that has taken us under their wing and, sorry, <laughs> and love. Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> this is all Robbie's suggestion. <laughs> so, um, we've worked with Veritas for the last Veritas for the last three years. Every time we go, and we get to do a variety of things. And this year, um, of course, we stay with Petra. She and her husband have given us a, an apartment at their their house, and so they're our family. When they're there, they're just. Shane and Petra are like brother and sister, and uh, uh, they're just wonderful. So we get to stay at their house, and they open it up to us each time, and we get to just leave a box or boxes of things that we don't need to take home. They just say, welcome them into their attic and keep them until we get there. So, um, so at Veritas, I do a lot of the clothing programs. They give out a lot of clothes uh, to their clients. Uh, we'll have shops. And, um, and so this year, I took upon myself to do children baby bags so that when parents come in, uh, you know, like that a new baby is born, that they're able to just say, I need a baby bag for this age. And the, the, the staff can just go into this room and be able to grab that bag for that child and not have to sort through 15, 20 boxes to get what they need. So they considered it a great help, and I'm glad to have done that. Um, also, Veritas, Project Romania. That's a group from uh, Northern Ireland, and they... I think for the last three years, we've also helped them. We help them with the shoe boxes. We get to go out into the Gypsy Village and do a feeding program. We bath babies. We, um, yeah, the feeding program is we do go in with a hot meal and we serve all the children at the um, at the village. So it could be what maybe a hundred kids or 125 kids that we would give a hot meal to twice a week. And so they allow us to help them with that. And we do the bathing babies. So uh, this year, I think it was 65 babies from ages infant to two years that we bathed and gave them all a, um, a we put a clean set of clothing on them and plus gave them two outfits to take home with them to grow into. And what else do we, oh, the shoe boxes. They let us go out, we, well, actually, we sort shoe boxes first, because they want to make sure that every child ends up with the same shoe boxes, or same items, or similar items in their shoe boxes. Um, so we do that, and their shoe boxes, they actually have shipped in, brought in by their own, com like their own churches, their people that support them, they bring in their shoe boxes. So. 
then we just make sure that everything is uh, sorted and good for them. And then we get to go to the schools and actually hand them out to the kids. And it is a blessing. It is, it's a good thing. <laughs> so, um, the kids are very excited to get their shoe boxes. And also we'll do women's clothing with, uh, with the Project Romania also. We'll do the, um, we'll take, women, we'll, all the women will come in and we'll give them clothing, you know, an outfit and then an extra outfit for them. Um, shoes, we try to give them all shoes because some of them are walking around with flip-flops in the snow. They're walking on their bare feet in the snow. Same as kids, they don't have, yeah, without, without the Project Romania, they'd be in a sorry short, you know, it's shape. They also give them bedding and they just provide so much for this village that they help out. And so we are blessed that they let us help them. And Project Dinesh, the, so he is so involved with the youth. He wants to help the youth get jobs to realize how important it is to follow Christ and keep their purity. You know, he's, he's a great guy to, to help the youth. And so he allows us to go and help him do, oh, what we've unloaded a huge bar, huge uh, truck up until 11 o'clock at one night because <laughs> the truck came in at such a time. And so he needed it unloaded. So we went and helped with that. And, along with, I think there was 15 youth that he was able to gather up to do that also. And we did a, a Christmas program with him. We went, he invited us out to go to be able to give the shoe boxes to his part of his program. And uh, Stitches Romania, which is Dutch. Yeah, so we go with, uh, with these guys and we'll package up food bags and then we'll take them out to a village. I think we did, how many bags did we do? I think it was close to 500 bags that we bagged up of all kinds of food that we're able to just take and hand to each family, could take it to their houses. So that was a blessing also. Um, and then there, there's so many organizations. Oh yes, and we help out at Crown, um, which has a foster home, and we're able to um, go and stay two nights a week and one weekend a month with the youth there. So we help them out that way. Because um, we just ask God, you know, just put us places where we can be used. You know, just make us useful while we're here. Um, so he does. <laughs> he makes our days and our weeks very full, and we and we are we are blessed by it, and uh, and we hope that we're blessing others with it also. Um, yeah, I don't know. I get, there's lots, lots, <laughs> lots and lots that we we do, and we'd love to have. Oh, and this is our hometown. And so we are blessed to be able to walk by. This is the standing on the bridge and looking up the river at the citadel is over here. And this we is the, down, yeah, we just live down the road that way. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And so New Year's, Christmas was tough this year, you know, because I had planned on coming home. We didn't get our visas until the 14th of um, December, so I couldn't make any plans to be able to come home and uh, until then. But then prices of flights were so expensive and um, sh and it was only going to be me having to fly and it was going to be the layovers were going to be a ridiculous length of time. And so I thought, I can't do that on my own. I don't want to do that on my own. I don't want to leave Shane to go to a singles retreat over New Year's without me. Yeah, I, was in, I was invited to a singles retreat. <laughs> <laughs> and we went. We did. We did we, <laughs> yeah, so because I didn't come home, you know, they said, okay, fine, you could take your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we were invited by a couple who have been 
who met at their singles retreat. And um, so they said, yeah, that I could come with them. So that was a, that was a real blessing. We got to go up into the, this mountainous area and go out on a lake in a very dangerous yeah. boat. <laughs> so it, was, it was beautiful and, and lovely. And uh, so then after, yeah, Christmas was hard. Um, but the family are so good. <laughs> Um, they video chat with us, with us lots. So it doesn't feel like we're actually losing out on too much of their lives. With the two new grandbabies <laughs> and with them all changing so much, they are, no, family is good. He's very good. And um, so after, after Christmas and New Year's, we were extremely busy. I, I didn't, wasn't at Veritas all that much because um, this fantastic David, who we do a lot with and Shane has become a great friend with, and he allows us to go out with him and work alongside of him. And, He's the busiest man I know because <laughs> he, um, he does Bible studies, he does men's groups, he does children's programs, he's delivering wood to families that would not, that are burning their clothes because they have no wood. You know, so kids are not going to school because they don't have a coat and they don't have a pair of shoes because they had to burn it to keep the house warm last night. And so David is out there taking this family wood. Shane's out there, Hordu's out there, chopping wood and delivering it to these families. So he's amazing. And David, um, he's a real, you know, like he's, he's a man that seeks God's heart. They seek God's will. And to all the rest of us, he, he does it. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's doing it because he serves the people really well. And we're glad that he's taken us under his wing and allows us to do that with him. So we go to a children's program with him on, in Sekuend, which is a Hungarian program, um, village. And so he doesn't even know what they're saying. He's speaking Romanian and having to translate it to Hungarian. And he considers it a highlight of his week to be able to go there and just enjoy these children. And so do, so do I. <laughs> so, so uh, they call Hungarian the language of heaven because it's the only other place that can speak it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard language. Yeah, yeah. So we just are busy, 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 doing whatever. You know, like one day, and think a highlight of this year was Tiffany and I <laughs> came to visit for twelve days. Um, for them to come and see and be even interested to be able to come and see what we do was a great encouragement to us. And we had a fantastic time. You know, the autumn was just constantly, when are we going back to the village? She loved being out into the village and to go into the foster home to be with the kids there. I said, Autumn, you don't say anything while you're there. <laughs> she goes, I can't get a word in edgewise, Nana. Because <laughs> you're constantly talking. So, um, yeah, so that was a, a fantastic blessing to have them come. Um, yeah, so, and it made it easy to be there for that last last month. Um, that I was, I was packed and I was like, Okay, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I'm ready to go. There's lots to be done here yet, but I'm ready to go. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else we Well, to um, get. as Val said about David, David and I have become partners in ministry, and it's, um, it's been a wonderful experience. It's been a great introduction. And sadly, David, well, good for him, sad for me, 
Uh, David may be leaving in September shortly after we get back to go to, back to England where he is from, to go to Bible school for a year. And so greatly miss him and a lot of the Roma people will greatly miss him. Um, but he has asked me to take on some of his duties, which is kind of frightening because I know what his duties are. But through him, we were, have been doing, and the year before too, a Bible study in a little community of Roma, which for those who don't know, Roma and Gypsies are the what, same. Uh, sometimes people get Roma and think we're talking about Romanians. And pretty well our sole focus has been working with the Roma, the Gypsy people. We love them. It's, it just, when you get to know their stories, when you get to see their lives, we, I feel like I'm at home with them. I walk into certain villages where they're at, and I just feel God saying, this is where you need to be. And you look around, and you say, yeah, this is where we need to be. And there are many frustrations, too, along with that, but that's part of... Um, you know, doing ministry for God is uh, frustrations help you grow. Um, bad times help you grow. But this Bible study we've been doing at Roar, which I really have taken heart to, you know, we are having a Bible study with prostitutes and pimps, child molesters. But there are people coming looking for God. There are people wondering how can I feed my children without going out on the street? because their man is gone, you know. So with all that entails, I just love them. I just love them. And, you know, how God works, we have, that Valdo didn't get to yet, on, um, we have this kids program in Secuen. We have another kids program in Chape de Noembre. It's a community just outside of where we live. You know, it's just within walking distance. Um, these are children. We were having a kids program in the house of a prostitute and a pimp. This poor woman had been put out on the street from when she was 10 year old by her mother. Her mother still lives there too. But these are the people we minister to. We don't select who we minister to. But we were doing a kids program there and I was watching them and they're sitting in the corner and they're listening. Mm -hmm. They're listening. You know, God uses all these things in all these ways, through ministry, through children, to reach the adults. Um, we have another children's program, which is what we got involved with through um, Project Romania with the Northern Irish people. We got introduced to the village of Seleuche. And our first year there, I thought, whoa, we are in a war zone. But then this year when we came back, I said to another man, I said, I see light here. And he said, I do too. And there is a difference. There was a difference with the people. There was a difference how when you come in, they're not just trying to steal everything. They're just, you know, they're just, they know we're here to help them. We know we're here, we're here because of Jesus. And there is a kids program there that will run anywhere from 90 to 100 kids. Um, the kids program in Chapter de Noembre, each community is different. And each, where Seleuche and Secuen, not so many Christians. Um, Chape de Noembre, Valda was home sick one day, so Hordu and I, which I will introduce you to Hordu here in a minute, um, were doing a children's program. They all came over and laid hands on me to pray for Valda. You know, and you just, you're looking at these children and you're listening. They know the songs, they know. Mm -hmm. They know, and they take this home to the parents. And the week later that I went out to, um, to the program, the kids are all applauding, you know, like so glad that their prayer was answered, that I was healed, you know. So they're firm believers, you know. Yeah. And, you know, and so this is where we see, and I guess we may as well go on to the future, or did you have something? No. No. Um, where that is coming up in September, 
We have kind of formed a team that is Valda and I, a Roma man named Hordu, and a Northern Irish nurse named Sarah, that we are going to start a ministry team that will expand in these villages we already are in into meaning expanding. We're going to be doing adult Bible studies. We're going to be doing church planning. We're going to be um, making more relationships with people through their children and can, continuing with the children's ministries, but also where God allows us to move into other communities where there's nobody at. And um, there are a few, a couple of communities close to us. One is called Albesht. We have been in there. I think I've talked about this before. Um, and another one is Vanator. Now, I did two funerals, assisted in two funerals for two men in Vanator. Um, three brothers died within the span of three months, none of them over 45. So this is the life they live, and most of that would have been probably drinking, rubbing alcohol. Um, and so we want to get in there with the gospel. We want to make a presence known that there are people that are willing to serve them in Albesh, people have tried, everything's been destroyed, but maybe this is the season for it. We don't know. We'll let God decide what happens there. Um, I think there's a great opportunity in Vanator. I think there's a hunger there. And so we just really want you fellas praying for us to prepare us for these because these are dark places. These are places that practice witchcraft. These are places that that rape their children constantly. These are places that beat their wives, kill their wives. Like stories that I don't even like to think about. And as we get to know these people more, we're knowing more of their lives, so we're seeing more of the horror. But we realize this is where the gospel, this is where salt needs to be. And with our friend Hordu, who is great because he is Roma, so he knows the culture, he speaks Hungarian, he speaks Romanian, and he speaks um, Gypsy. So it, we do have this great gifted young man that has a heart for Jesus, and I see it, he has a heart for Jesus, he has a heart for children, he has a heart for his people, and he's on fire. And, and there's just so many opportunities we see with him and I had been talking to some people back here. I know Darlene um, has probably mentioned, Stephen has mentioned Hordu to us. Do we have the pictures? We don't have. We didn't have the picture for Hordu. Oh, sorry. We didn't, um, we didn't get the picture. Didn't get it. Okay. Um, he is a man that I think is a key to a lot of ministries there. Unfortunately, he's not being used for that. He's being used more for building houses, for being a translator and that. But... His heart is in doing ministry. So we are going to support this man in his ministry. And through him, we will mentor him spiritually, but also he will mentor us culturally and spiritually. And so I think it's a win-win situation. I've seen him in action. I've seen his character. Um, this, he's not a new Christian. He's been a Christian now for about 10 years um, and just the whole time doing ministry. So what I am here mostly today, Velda and I, is not so much to talk about the past, but it's to talk about the future. And that future is partnering with Hordu and reaching out to villages that have not had the gospel of Jesus yet. And one of the things now, I'm, I've already talked to a person here who is willing to support um, him two days a week. There is also other expenses. There is expenses of fuel. There's expenses of food. No, they're not great expenses, but it, all this adds up. And because this man, our friend David, is leaving to go to England... He has also offered us vehicles to use anytime we want. So we have vans for, for um, ministry. We have vans for uh, transporting people. We have vans for, um, for hauling anything we need to get to these places. And 
one of the focus of our ministries, now the main focus of our ministries now will not be humanitarian because we cannot logistically do this. The four of us cannot logistically do humanitarian work. Our work will be solely gospel-based. But through that, we hope then other people will come along and be willing to do humanitarian work that are financially able, that are structurally able. Because we all realize we're not gifted. God has not gifted us with doing humanitarian work as in leading it. It's really hard to say no. <laughs> you know, when you see, you know children are going home and not going to eat tonight or not going to have heat. But if you are not discerning, those children might not receive it anyways. It'll go to something else. So it's, it's very much a discernment thing. And even Hordu, he says, I don't, I don't have the heart to say no. He can't say no. People show up at his house, and he gives them what he has. And then he's, him and his family are without. So, you know, like that's what um, Sarah had said. It's like people show up at his house all hours of the day and night looking for things, and Hordu gives it to them. And then his, you know, like his wife's going, but we need that. <laughs> you know? But Hordu's like, well, well, we'll get it some other way. You know, God will provide. And he does that with everything. His last dollar, he gives it away. God will provide. And that's the way he works. That's the way he is. Because he so. came from nothing. He mm -hmm. said he never had shoes until he was 12 years old. You know, so mm -hmm. anyways, but people, a Christian blessed him with something, gave him something to eat, and it turned him to Christ. So simple acts. So I don't want to really get into the details right now about how we would like to see this work, but God, I hope, will use us in Romania as long as he wants us there. Um, we're good to, with our, with our temporary residence cards, we're actually good to now to October 2019. Um, we can renew that in two years if the opportunity comes up and we'll, we'll see what God does. But this here, with Hordu, I am so sure with him and want to support his ministry that even if I was not in Romania, I would put every financial resource I possibly could to supporting him doing his ministry. Um, so this is what I really, I really want this church to pray for this individuals, just to let, you know, pray over this if this is in your heart to help support. It's not a great financial burden. I think it works out to $35 Canadian a day will pay his wages. And we're looking for three days support. We're not support, getting support for the whole week, but three days support is what we're looking for. Um, so I think that works. I think I have it worked out to three days support for salary would be $110. Canadian for, for a three-day pay in his wage. And that supports his family. Um, he has three children, and beautiful children. And um, so just want you to pray about this and think. I'm not very good at this. I'm not good for, for um, fundraising. It's not a gift that I have. And, um, but I want to see if God lays this on your heart for this ministry. Um, because Valda and I know that God has turned a corner for us through our friend David, that we are now known by people in these villages. They call us by name. Um, we want to have a stronger relationship with them. We don't want just evangelistic ministry. We want relational ministry. That's the only way they can grow. Because one of our biggest frustrations is we're not seeing transformation. We're seeing people accepting Jesus, but we're not seeing transformation. And so our whole purpose now is to take the word of God to them, form relationships, grow leaders, and through Hordu, I think this can be done. You know, God working through him. And the language is getting better for us. I hear it. Well, I speak for me anyways. I hear it. I'm not set in structure yet, but I'm, I can follow conversations, and I think if I actually really can find time to apply myself to learning it within a year, I would be able to speak it. Now, I, 
don't know well enough to duck, get into theological conversations, but, but to spread gospel too. And Horda will help me with that too. So I just, please, just pray for this. And, and uh, this is where our heart is. This is where we see where God has turned us. And Alvaldo said it was easy for her to come home. It wasn't easy for me to come home. It was, I love, it was great to see everybody and my family and that, but somebody want to put me on the plane tomorrow, I'll go back. Because um, I feel so strongly that God has put us there. And, um, you know, we're not there as tourists. We're not there just walking around. We are involved in people's lives. We take children into our, children come into our homes. Now they just follow us home and, and come into our home. And um, it's great. It's, it's where we should be. And there needs to be salt and light in these villages because they are horrific places. They are evil places. But that's where God does his best work. Shane had mentioned Sarah also being part of our, our team. And she is, she's been in Romania. I think she had told we would go to a supper on Wednesday nights. And Sarah has started coming and. She had told one of the ladies there that she has been in Romania 17 times now, 17 different mission trips she's gone on. And she's mostly done humanitarian work. But she is, has come this year, started 2018. She came on her own, and she went and was taking language lessons. So now, she says, when she goes to the village, she is not just there to... And she, she's a nurse, so she's able to bandage wounds and some horrific-looking things that she's taken care of. And so she says, I no longer want to go into the village and be there just long enough to feed them their food or to give them their clothing. I want to stay. I want to talk to them about God. I want to change their lives. And so when we started talking about what we're wanting to do with Hordu, she's like, pick me, I want to come too, you know, so she's wanting to be involved in this. She comes to the kids' programs with us, and she also, you know, like, she was introduced to Romania through Project Romania, and uh, so she just feels, you know, like, I no longer want to just come in, jump in for three months. I want to come, and so she's staying there. She's, she's been there since January, and she's staying until September. She goes home for a wedding, and then she's right back into Romania again, with more language lessons, and uh, and so she said when she when we get back in September that she would be willing to uh, to jump in with us and and help with that. And she also has a good foundation now in her language, so she would be good for us to to follow around <laughs> and learn more from her also. So. Yeah. So just keep us in prayer, please, for this, for our time here, that we are useful for Jesus here too. Sometimes we look <laughs> think of all just think of being there but god you know has ministry here for us too and the people around us and uh so that we can be mindful of that pray for our families you know it's uh it is a separation and it's hard um but like i say god has just made a home for us in both places and and we just want to be there to bring other people home to the home where they belong in the kingdom of god and and that's what it's all about. You know, we can feed them for a day, but it's eternity that we're all there for. And, and people are dying every day there. Well, they're dying every day here, and they're not knowing Jesus. And I think we need to really take this to heart as a church, that wherever we are, there's people dying around us, and we're not telling them about Jesus, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, this group from the Project Romania... They have, they bring out teams. Every three months or so, they bring out some teams. And the teams may only, st some only stay for 10 days, but they work, and they work hard. So just their last team, just before we left, we met two ladies. One was 85 years old. She was out there one day, or while I was with her, and she never stopped. Worked the whole day long. And she was putting me to shame because I'm going, I am tired. <laughs> and she's like, give me a cup of tea. You know? <laughs> so, so it was, it's amazing, you know, like, it's amazing. And, the, you know, like, 
um, she brought a friend, because she, she had been telling this other lady, um, I, I go to Romania every year, you know, like, why don't you come with me? And so this lady, three years ago, finally said, okay, take me with you. And so she said, I went that three years ago, and I come every year now to see what and do whatever I can to help out. So it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter, you know, like, get involved, be doing, be busy doing God's work, you know, wherever you are. Yeah, Christians have a retirement plan. It's called heaven. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, so <laughs> anyway, so just, yeah. you know, whatever it is, it is, you're praying, working. I mean, God enables us to do everything. And I know there's, I can't remember the source, but an old preacher once said that um, God buries his workers and then continues his work. You know, that we're not essential for Romania, but God will work through us and... Um, and then when we're gone, he'll send someone else. So thank you, everybody.